Yesterday I was driving around in my state looking at all the beautiful foliage and I thought, oh, I gotta create something fun and easy for my YouTubers. Um, so today I decided to do create some simple fall abstract watercolor cards. You just, you know, splattering paint, moving paint around, scraping the paper to get these nice little fine lines, and then going back in and painting um, some tree branches as well. This is that same wet on wet watercolor technique that I talked about. It's like really kind of cool. It keeps your paper wet longer. It's a lot of fun to play with and um, I go over this again. Um, I have a tutorial on this and I can link it in the description below. So this is just something fun, easy, simple to do. It has a lot of, you know, expression in the watercolor. That's what you want to do. You want to learn how to express what your colors, your paint, playing with it and just exploring and see what you see what you can what you can come up with um, also check out my patreon i have ad free videos traceables exclusive tutorials and a live stream in the top tier boop you can check it out right there in a second it's just a place people go and support my channel which i appreciate so much so without further ado let's get painting some watercolor fall abstract cards so i'm gonna go over my supplies i have two pieces of arsh 100 percent cotton cold pressed paper um they're like four and a half by six um, I'll be using this basically like this past plastic palette um, if you can find a plastic palette or some kind of laminated item to paint um, to use because we do the wet on wet technique where you're painting water on one side and here to the plastic and then paint on the other side because it stays longer it can do really cool effects with it um, I'll be using the big wide brush that I have like a two inch brush to get the water in here uh, I'll be using a number 12 Neptune series and for skinny little trees, number six, um, long round velvet touch series. I've already got some paints mixed up. Basically, you know, it's fall. So it's yellows and oranges and reds and browns, some greens thrown in there and whatnot. So this is a trick. I actually showed you like one great trick. It's, I'll link the video again here a while ago, how to do this really cool trick where you keep the paper kind of wet for a longer period of time. It doesn't dry. So basically take a brush or a sponge, right? To get a sponge. I'm going to just flip this over. This is the side I'm going to actually get paint on. And I'm going to put some water. That's a little too wet, but I'm taking off some of the water. I'm going to just coat it on one side, and then you're going to flip it over, and it's going to stick. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do this side. Let me see if the side's not sticking, so I'm going to paint that. There we go. Now it's sticking. <laughs> so now we're going to play with the watercolor itself. It's going to be, if you do wet on here, it's going to stay wet and wet longer. So I'm going to start to play with, by the way, I have my, um, this little easel thing on an angle. So I'm just going to do like, see, I'm just painting the way, where the water goes, the paint will go. So I'm just kind of painting on this angle, going this way. Just like that. You see the angle? The rest of it's dry. From there, you can start to tap in some of your colors. Oranges, reds. I've got some burnt sienna here. Playing around with all the colors here. Just some yellows. Woohoo! So particularly like the trees are kind of like funky. You know, colors everywhere. Kind of tap it in with the big number 12 brush. Just fill it all in, you know? throw in some of this green because you know there's still some green around I've got burnt umber here a little paints gray make it even darker get some more green so I'm mixing peacock blue to my yellow to make this nice bright vibrant green and remember I said it's gonna go where the water is right so I'm just gonna paint those colors in there got the yellow can add a little burnt umber to that and make it more of a mustardy yellow. Just kind of putting that out there. If you want to put some deep blue sky in there, maybe add some, I have ultramarine blue here. I'll add some paints gray to that. Let's play around with adding some of that. And you can flip this and kind of bleed it down. See how you just hold it like that on an angle? That's the fun part of it. You can grab some red tones and mix some red with some brown. I'm gonna tap that in there and it's just playing with the color, right? Go back in here and add some more brown, some gray. 
Just tapping in that dark color. You can actually spray it, right? And then take our sponge or a paper towel, kind of soak up this edge here. Go back and flip it back. Look how that's coming out. That's kind of cool, right? Picture like a tree would be in here. So maybe grab some burnt umber, some paints gray. Now I'm only painting this part up top. We'll do the ground in a minute, but I just want this whole part up top to bleed. You can go add some more thicker pigment. I'm going to add tap some new yellow in here. I have brilliant orange here. Whatever colors you like, I'll mix it with some paint. Uh, burnt sienna. Ooh, just tippy tap. It's really kind of fun. Some green in there. See where that goes. Just kind of go up with this. 12, like there's a tree there, you know. Don't be afraid. See how kind of cool and abstract that looks? Listen, if you want to splatter, splatter. So we'll have a nice deeper effect. Some red in there. How about some brown? Just look at that, how cool that looks. I got a little in the bottom. If you don't want to get the bottom half, cover it. Right, just a little bottom. Oh, the fun we have. I'm gonna pick some more browns. Kind of want to just tap them around in here. And just kind of pretend like there's a tree kind of kind of up here. And I'll tap some green. So you just do like a line. Let's see where that goes. Kind of having its own little funky fun, right? <laughs> yeah, I could add a little more green in there. I'm going back and tapping it and then tapping on the paper towel. Kind of removing some of that yellow. I'm gonna get some brown in there. So we've got this whole kind of splattering going on. And I might want to go back in and add some more concentrated yellow. If you feel like you've gone crazy, you can you can lift some of it. You can lift it with the brush or even a paper towel. This is kind of wet paper towel. See that? You can lift some of it off the page. If you feel like you've gone wild, maybe too wild. But I'm like loving the, like, all the craziness. You can kind of lift it and then go back in and add some more yellow if you want to do that. I feel like I got too much orange in there and I want to put more yellow back in there. See? I add that back in. All right, so that's just really, really wet. This part is still very, very dry. We can do a different technique on the bottom. So wet on dry. And this whole bleeding scenario is still going to stay wet. You can play around with um, taking a credit card or some kind of sharp object. I have this nib here. You can use um, a twig and see if you can make some tiny branches coming in. Look at that. You got a tree right there already forming into little, little twigs coming off that. It's so much fun to do a little scraping. You can't see what I'm talking about. There it is. <laughs> Lighting's not really showing well here. But see, like the little with the paint folds in, right where you scraped. It's so much fun to do this. Do another one here. This is like a nice pointy nib. Really can get some fine lines doing this one. That's what I like about it. You get these nice cool fine lines. We can also go back in and paint it too, but the scraping is so much fun and quite therapeutic. So we'll finish that. Now we'll take our number 12. We'll do the ground on the bottom. So that could be green and brown and orange. I've got some greens here again with the brown. I'm gonna mix them together now that I have them sitting close to each other. I've just envisioned myself having more brown ground and just more like, see how I'm just kind of 
kind of just tapping, touching, going like this, and you get this dry brush technique. You get a little bit darker, a little less water on your paint. See, I'm grabbing the um, paint's gray and the burnt umber. You can tap on the paper towel down here too. Get more pigment, less water, so, which means more paint. Tapping here, still not dark enough, so getting even more paint. See that? It's probably kind of a cool look. And even thicker, right in there. I'm really, like, I love that. It doesn't have to all be brown. You want to play around with throwing in some blue. So I'm mixing some blue, ultramarine blue with some paints gray. Let's get a little more blue in here. Right? Could be like water. Just envisioning it this way. Go back in and add some yellow oranges. Woo, that's a little intense. <laughs> Let me turn it down a little bit. So I'll get the paint wet. But I'm not painting the whole bottom. Just kind of playing around with going like this on its side, going down a little bit. I'm going to add some of that bright green again. It's very, very thick paint. Just getting the energy of like my hand going like this. Down, down. See? Just barely touching the paper and you get that beautiful dry brush. It's really kind of all you need to do. Again, if you want to splatter a little bit, let me take some browns. Splatter a little bit here on the side and over in here. That's kind of it. I really love how this looks. I don't want to get too crazy with this. I'm just going to let it go. So, it's still very, very, very wet. You really want this to dry because we're going to go back in and we're going to paint in some trees, right? So we just leave that here and we can work on the second one, which is over here. And grab that card. So you want to make it a little bit different than the first one. I'm just going to clean up this area right here. So now that we've got the, the way to play with this, and go back with this one, again, water the back of the paper. So you could use a sea sponge if you don't want to use the brush. Again, just find the tooth. This is the toothy side. This is the non-toothy side. So I'm going to paint, not paint, excuse me, I'm going to soak it with water. Not too wet, but wet enough. You might have more control with the sponge than using the big old brush because it might get really wet with the big old brush. The sponge works better. Then you flip it back over here and it's sticking, right? Then you decide how you want this one to go. Maybe more of a blue sky in this one, right? With some color. So let's play around with that. I'm going to grab my number 12 brush again. Moving that one over. I don't want to touch this guy yet. And I'll be using some ultramarine blue with some of that Payne's gray. Now at this point, you can do wet on wet or wet on dry. So I might go ahead again, take some water and just kind of throw in the sky here. On this one. I'm filling it all in with water. And let's paint some sky. So again, ultramarine blue with a little paint gray. Ooh. Kind of filling in this deep sky. I'm just playing. And get a little darker on top. And I'm leaving it wet here because I want to throw in the colors, right? You see how it just kind of went like this and I left some white spots? Those could be clouds. I can go back in and add some deeper paints gray right under those lighter areas here. See? Paints gray. Just tipping my brush on the 12. Just kind of tippy tapping it. See how it goes. Now I'm going to clean up my brush, grab some yellows and oranges. 
playing with adding that in. I'm gonna make this one a little bit different. Get the orange kind of going in here. That's really bright, so maybe you want to turn it down with some, you know, different colors. Burnt sepia, all that stuff. I'm going to add some of that green. I'm just kind of tippy tapping the colors. So I'm grabbing some of that green again and tapping it in between. So you see the dark kind of clouds in the trees. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit here. And I'm going to play around with the bottom. I'm going to add some water, let it bleed. And then I'm going to go back in and add a little more orange in here. See, the water's only going to, I mean, the paint's only going to go where the water is. See how it just stops right there? You want to add more water, watch it flow down. And there we go. Now it's really flowing down. It's really kind of cool effect going on in here when you're lifting it up. This one, don't worry about it. It's not going to, it's not going to bleed going downward because it's kind of drying. You want it to just dry naturally. You don't want to try and manipulate it. I'm tapping in some um, paints gray, a little burnt umber up in here. Let's see what we got here. So I got some blues in that one. Maybe put a little blue down in here. It's like reflecting in the water. I'm just playing. There is no right or wrong with this. That's what's fun about doing kind of abstract designs. Tapping in more darker greens. Then I'll go back in and get some, you know, reds and yellows again. Just be careful with this because the blue can make it green with the add the yellow. Maybe thicker pigment won't do it as much. And here, splatter a little bit. Just having some fun, right? Got that blue, still kind of misty up there. Don't know quite where we're gonna put some trees, how the trees are gonna look, but we'll figure it out. We can put a little, see how it goes like this with your brush, whoops. Again, get a little darker by adding some burnt umber and some paints gray and some areas. I'm just playing with I want the feel to look. Maybe add some green. There's no right or wrong. Get that blue in there. Peacock and yellow make that nice pretty green. So got that sky going. It's really kind of like the clouds kind of forming in here. There's a couple of things we can do. We can kind of remove some more paint if we want by lifting the brush, twisting it, see? I twist it and you get those clouds and you can go back in and add a deeper blue gray just see I'm just kind of tippy tapping it underneath here so it's just a little tap just to get the dark dark ones and you kind of want it on a linear kind of look see it's still bleeding on this one because it's very wet. It stays very wet on wet, which is great. Just tapping that dark blue, gray. Really having fun with that. And you can even take your paper towel, kind of look like the sun's shining through by just taking it and going like that. See like that, like the clouds. Kind of fun to do that. Play around with it. I mean, you can go crazy doing something like that. You don't always have to do that. And I'm gonna go back in and add a more yellow. Playing. All right, so this one, we have to figure out where we want the trees again. We'll take our little nib guy. I don't know, I'm gonna have trees kind of coming here. From way down here. So I'm just kind of scraping where I'm going to want them to go, bending, twisting in the wind. Same thing here. 
and I'll have to wait for this one to dry also before I put in some tree branches. So now at this point, letting it dry. If you want to add some gold accents, play around with it. I mean, go have fun with it. But look how simple that was. A wet and wet. It's kind of a cool thing in scraping. I love the dry brush in here. You, when it feels fairly dry, you can go and take the number six, make some nice um, grasses. So I've got the burnt umber here. That's some yellow. It's a little green, so I'll add some red. Make it brown. And minimal water, see? And you just take the teeny the brush and the tip and just kind of just go up these little grasses. Boop, 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 boop. Could even get darker with the paint's gray. Just little grasses in here. And now if this feels fairly dry, we can take the number six and start to really put in the trees. It's still bleeding a little bit, so maybe wait a little bit longer. So it's a good way to test it, right? To see. But meanwhile, this one's down here because it was minimal water. You can just put these grasses right in. I wouldn't go crazy with the grasses because you can go nuts with grasses. Just a little bit here and there. You know, don't don't make yourself nuts. Let's see if this is still wet. Going in and adding the thicker tree trunk with the dark paints gray. And seeing how dry this is. Still a little wet, so let it dry and we'll come back. So now that they're fairly dry, you can go back in <laughs> and start to make your tree branches and have them uh, like have them have some expression. Get, you can get like really like, see how many these like branches come out, and come down, just really kind of have movement and vitality. And we did the scraping, but we can go back in. And, you know, add these like real intense trees. And you know, it gives it a lot of expression. You can put a little fence back here. Maybe I'm just going down here and a little fence. Kind of like broken. We broke it up. A couple more tree branches. I just like the energy you can do with the black. Come right off the page, by the way. Come down. Then you get the little grasses here. Just kind of going off. Little twigs. And I mean, you could do a little splattering with the with this tiny little brush here. It's kind of cool. See that one was pretty simple. And the same thing with the other one. So now that we have kind of trees kind of planned out here, so now we're just going to go in with our dark color and map out where we want these trees, have some energy kind of going off again out. The trunks could be bigger, wider than this one, just different. I could have three here. This is the part that's just, you get really creative with the trees. Crisscrossing the branches, all that energy of a crazy fall day. Just kind of having twist over here, a little teeny. So I don't know how much you got cut off, but basically you go back in with the paints gray and make those twigs. You can splatter a little in here. I go back in here and just kind of playing around with adding in some tree branches and some tree trunks. Get really tiny little branches up top coming off the paper. You know, get really expressive with it. The dark color is just really cool. And then because it's already dry, you can start to take like the number six, grab some greens and some browns, do some dry brushing. Hold it on its side, kind of just go down like this. Like right in here, just kind of like what we did here. We're doing it after the fact. All right, I'm going back and in some greens. Can add some blues, shadows, the trees, just like that. 
They're both kind of leaning this way. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> it happens. I'm going to add some more yellow oranges. You can um, splatter some of that yellow. I have a smaller brush, smaller splatters. You can make it like the leaves are falling. You can add a little yellow up in here. You know, you get, another way to do it is like roll your brush, roll it, but I'm not necessarily going to do that. You can just do some little tippy taps, grab some orange, do a little tippy taps. So like the leaves are almost gone. They're still kind of falling down. Just do a little couple of side dashes. Just really, you know, it's just playing with color and moving the paint around. Don't make yourself stressed out. And if you want to go back in, add a couple of grasses here in the front too. Boom, 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 boom. Just like that. Add a little couple of those bright yellow, orange leaves, kind of just boop, boop, boom, hanging on the ground. See, I'm just kind of tip tapping it, going sideways. That's it, really. Like I said, you want to splatter some more up top. I always grab my brush and splatter on top of the brush. Give it more of a fun, get some splatter that paints gray too in the dark tree area. That is it. So once they're dry, you know, and if you really want to back in this section here, I might go in and grab some greens. I might play around with adding a little bit of green in here. Just a little doodad bush, kind of like I'm just throwing that in there. I feel like it needs it to like kind of floating weird yellow. So put some green back in here. It's up to you. Do whatever you want. Come go back in and add some more green on that one. And then when it's all dry and done, you know, you can put it on like black cardstock for a nice card. Look at that. Ta da! And it was, how much effort was that? Minimal, looks really cool. You know, it's a lot of fun to play with the colors. These are things you should do playing with wet on wet and, um, you know, abstract. It doesn't have to be this specific kind of like field. If you take a picture of like the greens and where they placed or the oranges of the trees in the field, then you can just kind of do that and then have like light shining through. I hope this was fun and easy for you guys. Some people say it's difficult to do this, but I think it's just playing with color, throwing down some paint. The thing you have to do is have a little patience for it to dry. Um, so it doesn't kind of have this ugly bleed. And you can always go back in and add some elements that you want to. Like I added that green in here. You can add a little bit of yellow up in here. When it's dried, I don't know if you know this, but if you take the actual yellow right out of the tube, you can. It's almost like wash and adding the yellow up here. Same thing with the orange. You can do that. See, this one will have some more of these fun leaves up in here than the other one did. Uh, see, I'm just kind of dry brushing them in because this is all dry now. So they're like they're the last leg of kind of hanging onto the tree branches, and they're gonna be falling down any minute. <laughs> Everything's just starting to turn here. I'm sorry if I sound very nasally. I'm still dealing with my sinus issue since I got back from France, so I can't help that. It just doesn't seem to want to go away. And there we go. And that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Take your time, have fun with it. They're small paintings. It's like little studies. Don't stress out about it and have some fun. And you know, I wasn't looking at any particular thing. I'm just putting color down and figuring out I want to put some trees in there, splatter some stuff. It looks kind of cool, right? All right, take care guys. Have a great day and I'll speak to you soon.